What's up, everybody? Mr. Cornell back at it again, going over some trig with you today. Uh, today we're going to be looking at uh, a big thing in um, in the trig world, and that's graphing some sine and cosine uh, graphs. Kind of neat stuff. Uh, definitely brand new stuff that you've never seen before. So maybe you'll find some interest in it in it a little later on after I get all over all like the weird and confusing stuff with you. Um, so here we go. So here we, we have a little review stuff and here is our unit circle. So if we remember from our unit circle, um, the first thing is that the unit circle has a radius of one. Uh, radius equals one, okay? So the distance from here to here is one. So this point here would be considered one comma zero. This point here would be considered zero comma one, negative one comma zero, uh, zero comma negative one, and then we complete back around. Now, why that's important for what we're gonna get into now, we had learned at one point that uh, we started to change those coordinate points of x, y into x, which was cosine, and y, which is sine. Then we started messing around with it even more, saying, well, now we're going to start moving around in circles. So this first area here would be considered zero degrees. This area here would be 90 degrees. This uh, spot here would be 180 degrees. Here would be 270 degrees. And then we round it right back here again at zero, but now we're going to call it 360 for one complete circle. So now what we're going to do is we're going to start looking and graphing this on uh, we're going to get our, to our calculator on the coordinate plane. But you can't graph, it's, it's not going to be graphing these numbers anymore, but we're going to be graphing the degrees. So um, what we were learning is since, okay, we have a half a circle here, that's 180. 90 degrees is like having pi over 2. Okay, it's like having 180 over 2 because converting degrees to radians again which we had done earlier so things are going to get a little weird for you guys but once we get through a couple questions it'll just kind of become second nature to you uh, so just kind of stick with me as as best you can as we go through graphing these uh, functions here all right so it, it keep that circle in mind because it'll make sense where I'm getting these numbers from so first we're going to graph the sine function now sine is really the y, right? So if I went to zero, now this is the degrees, at zero degrees the y is zero, okay? Because again this is our point, it's x comma y, so the y value is zero, so this is zero. Now this you don't know yet, but you do know 90 degrees. So if I came up here to 90 degrees, what is the y value in the point? the y value on the point is one. Now if I keep going around the circle, at 180, the y value is zero. At 270, the y value is negative one. And then if I complete my circle at 360, 360, my y value was zero. Now if you went around ahead and went the opposite direction, and went negative 90, negative 180, negative 270, negative 360, you would be just having uh, negative 1, 0, negative 1, 0. Okay, you're just kind of going backwards now around the circle. What we're going to start to get used to is realizing that now 90 is pi over 2. 180 is pi. 270 is 3 pi over 2. 360 is 2 pi. So remember, we're looking at as pi is 180 degrees. So 180 divided by 2, 90, 180. 3 times 180 divided by 2 is 270. And that's kind of how that's, that's where those numbers are coming from. Remember, these are degrees, these are radians. Now, if I went ahead and graph this, this is the graph, or this is the coordinate plane we're going to start to get used to. So right here at 0, your first is pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. And then if you went in the negative direction, it's the same negative pi over 2, negative pi, negative 3 pi over 2, and negative 2 pi. So if we go ahead and graph these points, let's see what we get. So at negative 2 pi, it's 0. 
at negative 3 pi over 2, we're at negative 1, all right? So, um, wait, I, no, that's positive 1. Change that. Uh, yeah, see, they're opposite. Um, so this would be 1, this would be 2, this would be 3, this would be negative 1, this would be negative 2, this would be negative 3. So here you have 1. Then at negative pi, you're at 0. Then at negative pi over 2, you're at negative 1. 0, 0. Pi over 2, 1. Pi, 0. 3 pi over 2, negative 1. And 2 pi is 0. So again, I'm graphing these points. Consider this for what you guys understand. Consider this your x. That's these guys. Consider this your y. Those are these guys. Now, if I go ahead and connect my points, it's going to look something like this. Okay, and that is perfect, if I do say so myself. This is graphing sine theta. Um, or if we're using our calculator later, it's like graphing sine of x. That's what graphing the sine of x. Now, um, take it in for a second. We're going to look at some vocabulary things. Okay, so this is graphing it. Now, these guys here, these y values, as we call them, those are going to be called critical values. And you'll see why in a little while I'm going to call those critical values. Uh, an important vocabulary term is, is a cycle. A cycle would be like going from a 0 to 2 pi, right? It's completing, okay, one, it's like going around a circle one time. So one cycle is like going around a circle one time. So this right here would be considered one cycle. Because if you go around a circle, it's 360 degrees, so it's 0 to 2 pi or 2 times 180, which is 360. So there you go. That is our first graph there. Again, stick with me because I'm going to make it real easy or a little bit more understandable soon. So now let's do the same thing. Let's graph the cosine function. Okay, let's graph the cosine function. So now for us, we're going to say the cosine function is x. Here's our unit circle. Um, so let's start at 0. It's a little bit easier. So the x value at 0 now is 1. At 90, the x value here is 0. At 180, my x value is negative 1. At 270, my x value is 0. And then I complete my circle at 360 with it being 1. Now if you go backwards here, uh, you're going to have a 0. Let's not mess this up this time for anybody. Uh, this is going to be a negative 1. Okay, Boom, boom, bam, okay. Uh, then we have a zero again, and then a positive one. Okay, so there is my cosine function. All right, so now let's graph this. So this is my x, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. So we'll start at 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. So here it is. Here's 0, 1. Um, then we have at pi over 2, it's 0. At pi, it's negative 1. At 3 pi over 2, it's 0. And at 2 pi, I am 1. And then I can kind of do the same thing on the other side. Okay, again, so we're graphing these points. Uh, this is my x points, and these were my y points. Now, if I connect it, now I'm going to look like this. And this is your cosine function. Uh, anybody recall what do we call these guys? Those are our critical values, critical values. Now, what do we consider one cycle? One cycle would be like going from 0 to 2 pi. It's like going around a circle one time. So this is one cycle. Some people might be looking at this and saying, well, it's exactly the same. They're both squiggly lines. Well, if you, if you look at the one single cycle, this cycle at 0 is starting here. It's going like this. Take a look at the sign. 
sine is starting at zero, and it's going like this. So they're very similar, okay, but they are slightly different. And we'll kind of examine that later on, but not now. Uh, so there you go. That's where the graphing all comes from. And now we're going to kind of explore uh, some special notes down here. So here's kind of the summary of, of everything that we did so far. Okay, the domain and range doesn't matter if you were sine and cosine. Your domain and range was going from negative infinity to positive infinity. Both of them, your range, that's your y value. The lowest point was at negative 1. The highest point was at positive 1. Um, your critical values, okay, those are those uh, y values. Uh, for the sine curve, we call them 0, 1, 0, negative 1, and 0. So that's like kind of go up, hitting that 0 again, down, back up to 0. And then this guy, okay, was at 1, 0, negative 1, 0, positive 1. So those were our critical values that completed one single cycle. So uh, again, for one cycle, it says, remember the sign looked like this for one cycle. And the cosine look like this for one cycle. Okay, this is my y-axis. So there you go there. Okay, now we had learned that, you know, way back when that there are odd functions and even functions. So we're going to call the sine function was an odd function because it's symmetric to the origin. Okay, um, and then you have the even function, okay, and that has symmetry with the y-axis. Okay, so there are your odd and even function stuff. All right, so there we go there. So now from here, we're going to start to kind of explore different ways that you can change this, and we're going to learn how to use this in our calculator, and then that's going to totally just blow our minds and make everybody happy because then we could just plug it in and, and write the answer. Um, so to use your calculator, okay, so to use your calculator, uh, here I got mine right here, we have to make sure that our calculator is in what they call radian mode. So you might recall this when you were doing sine, cosine, and tangent uh, in one of your other classes uh, that you had to be in degree mode we want to make sure that here we're doing this in radians. Because remember, these guys are all in radians. Now, we need our window to match this. So this is the part you kind of have to memorize a little bit. So in your window, here's, here's the window that we want. Uh, depending on the question, so we'll kind of match their graph to our graph. Their graph for the x goes from negative 2 pi to positive 2 pi. That's exactly what you're going to put. You're going to hit, on your calculator, you're going to hit the negative 2, and then you're going to hit the pi button. But now when you move, it's going to change that to a decimal, but don't worry about that. Then the x max was 2 pi. There it is there. Now the scale, that's what we're counting by. So how did they count? They counted each one of these moving by pi over 2. So I'm going to put pi over 2. So that's your standard x window when graphing the sine and cosine functions. All right, now the y, okay, now the y's, the critical values went to 1. We only went up as high as 1. So now we're going to actually start to change that, okay, and we're going to start making them go higher. So just, I'm going to make mine go to 5. And the scale, I'll count by 1. So if you hit the graph now, I totally messed this up. I don't know why. Uh, maybe I have something in here. Negative 2 pi to 2 pi, pi over 2. Oh, I know what I did. Can't have a y minimum of negative 5 and a y max of positive 5. I messed that up. Okay. Ooh, graph. All right. So now each one of these represents that's pi over 2, that's pi. That's 3 pi over 2, and that's 2 pi. That's these guys. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So let's graph. What are we graphing here? Cosine. 
Let's go to y equals cosine x. So if I did this right, it should look like this. There it is. Perfect. There we go. So now any question where they're asking you to graph sines or cosines, now you know how to do it. Okay, and they can change it up any which way. Just make sure you put it into your calculator carefully and memorize your window that you're going from, depending on the question, but it's your scale is pi over 2. Uh, a cycle is 2 pi. Okay. Uh, so now let's start to manipulate these. Let's graph now 3 cosine x. Okay. I'm going to leave the other guy. Let's go to y2 now. 3 cosine x. All right, and we'll hit graph. Now watch what happens. It has the same curves. Those curves now just started increasing. So it, it follows the same order, right? Except now, instead of this first value being 1, look, it's at 3. 0 stayed the same. This was negative 1. It's actually changing how high the graph is going. So in our normal uh, cosine x, in our normal cosine x, our critical values here are 1, 0, negative 1, 0, and 1, right? 1, 0, negative 1, 0, and 1. But now, all of a sudden, that graph is up here at 1, 2, 3. So this first critical value was at 3. That's not negative, that's equals. Um, then it was at 0. Then here, it's down 1, down 2, down 3. Down 1, down 2, down 3. That's there. 0, instead of being 1, it's up here at 3. So your critical values are just basically being multiplied by that number. 3 times 1, 3 times 0, 3 times negative 1. And then the same thing happens on the other side, because they're symmetrical. 1, 2, 3, 0, and negative 3. So now that's going to look like this now. Pretty neat. There you go. So what do you think is going to happen here? What do you think we're going to do there? That's going to be now negative 4 cosine x. So it's like doing negative 4 times 1, negative 4 times 0. Or, say you're not really into the, in the mood for memorizing, um, I could put negative 4 cosine x. There's our normal cosine curve. And then negative 4. Now you can notice now uh, that that value here is going to 4. To 4. But it's, it's on the different side now. It's not, see this guy stayed on the same, but now it's going to kind of flip to the other side. Why? Because of that negative. Negative 4 times 1 it is negative 4. Negative 4 times 0 is 0. Negative 4 times negative 1 is positive 4. Negative 4 times is po uh, 0. And then here is negative 4. So it's multiplying this times our original critical values. Or you're just looking at here. Uh, people might be saying, why aren't I going to the table? Because look at the table. The table's not really going to help you too much. Um, it's pretty ugly, unless you just kind of understand. Remember, we changed the whole thing. The window is no longer 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It's pi over 2. So you're not doing that. That's why it's really super important that you understand where these points are. This represents pi over 2. This represents pi, 3 pi over 2. So we're not using a calculator to graph points like we were doing back in ninth grade. All right, so let's, let's get this guy on the board here. So we're starting now here at negative 4. Then he's at 0. Then he's at positive 4. 0, negative 4. There, watch him go. So cool. 
Awesome. Okay, and then he's gonna go back up. And he's gonna go, wow, well, she should be up here for terrible counter. Do, 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 do. And then back down here. Bam. So there you go. There is negative four cosine x. Uh there it is. Cool. Neat. Awesome. All right, let's take a look at the next one. Uh, once you kind of get the idea of what we're doing here, uh, you'll you'll decide some things are easy with the calculator and some things are not. So for 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 this for the the basicness that it is, um, they're saying, well, here's your sine curve. Don't use your calculator and graph it. Well, they already gave you the graph, the original sine graph. So you knew your critical values were 0, 1, 0, negative 1, and 0. 0, 1, 0, negative 1, and 0. And we just learned that, that th this front number makes them go up and down, right? So you're just multiplying. So then the new one would be 0, 4, 0, negative 4, and 0. So then I would go 0, 4, 0, negative 4, 0. So it's doing this. Now I'm showing you one cycle here. So now to complete that, watch. You just go negative 4, 0, positive 4, 0. There it is. So sometimes it's a little bit faster once you get it using the calculator. Uh, here, same thing, multiply it. Negative three times zero is zero. Negative three, zero. Negative times a negative is a positive. So this is gonna end up going here now. Uh, what did I do? So here, zero, then came negative three, then comes zero positive 3 and 0. So here I'll, I'll draw that one single cycle in the positive space from 0 to 2 pi. Now just flip it. 3, 0, negative 3, 0. And then what we call this? Negative 3 sine x and he was 4 sine x. Alright, so there you go. There's, there's graphing. There's the introduction to using the calculator. So now amplitude, that's that's what I was trying to really get us at without giving away all the fun in the party. So that number in front of your sine or your cosine, that's called the amplitude. So it's the height of the waves for a, now this, here we go, sinusoidal, sinusoidal. I'm not really great at spelling. There's an I here. Graph. Graph just means a sine. Sinusoidal just means kind of sine or a cosine. Um, there you go. So then if I ever gave a question and says, well, what is the amplitude? It's the absolute value of, of the number in front, right? So A sine X, which should be uppercase or a cosine x. So that number in front would be the answer to the amplitude. So if I went up here really quick, and said, well, what was the amplitude of y equals 4 sine x? You would tell me that the amplitude was 4. If I said, what was the amplitude of negative 3 sine x? You would tell me the amplitude is 3. Again, it is the absolute value, OK? All right. That's it. Well, not really. There's more questions. But this is now just practice. It's throw it in your calculator and, and, and make the graph. So let's go for it. Um, window, what do we get used to doing? Negative 2 pi, positive 2 pi, pi over 2. This, you can leave it 5. You can leave the 10 if you wanted to. Just 5 is a little bit easier to see. All right, so let's go to that first one. It says 2 sine x. So I'm going to go back to my y equals. I'm going to do 2 sine x. Graph. When am I ever going to use this in real life? 
well, if you're ever like an electrical engineer, you'll use this all the time. Okay. Um, but it only wants you to graph it from where? Negative pi to positive pi. So you have a whole 10 by 10 grid here. Do they care where it goes? No, but don't squish it all in. So zero, maybe skip two, will it fit? Uh, yeah, it should fit. You can say this right here is pi over two. Skip two, this would be pi. Skip two, this would be three pi over two. Skip two, this is two pi. But now understand this. Now again, you skip one, negative pi over two, negative pi, uh, skip two, you have negative three pi over two, and then you have two pi. Since they only told you to graph it from negative pi to pi, when you go over to this graph, pi over two, pi. You're only going from here to here. Don't graph the rest of it or you're going to be wrong. You went too far. So this is not going to count in this graph because that's what I told you. So if I look at it, at negative pi, you're here. And then you're going down to 1, 2. Was, that was your amplitude. So at negative pi, you're at 0. At pi over 2, and so again, it doesn't matter, but you better label. So if you're counting as 1, 2, 3, 4, or maybe you're going to skip 1, do 1, skip 1, do 2, skip 1, do 3, just to make your graph a little bit bigger, um, that's fine, but just make sure you're labeling things so that the grader or reader doesn't, un doesn't get lost. Um, so what did we say? Negative 2, uh, positive 2, and back down to 0. So I should get this shape here. Goes down to negative two. Oh, that's disgusting. Try again. It goes down to negative two, through zero, up to positive two. There you go. Done. Try this one on your own. Or not. Uh, what does it say? Negative 2 cosine x graph. So there's your answer. There's your cosine graph. Now, directions. Graph one cycle of the function. So one cycle. Nope. One cycle starts at 0. Uh, again, skip one, you're going to be pi over 2. Skip one, you can be pi. Skip one, you're 3 pi over 2. Skip one, you're 2 pi. One cycle goes from here to there. That's all you're graphing. So if I look at it, I'm starting down here at negative 2. Uh, skip one, negative 1. Skip one, negative 2. Skip one, positive 1. Skip one, positive 2. So I'm going to start down here at negative 2, so that's where it started here. At pi over 2, I hit 0. At pi, I hit 2. And then at 3 pi over 2, 0. Then at 2 pi, I'm back down here at negative 2. Now if I trace it, All right, moving right along. Let's keep it going here. Graph two cycles of negative sine x. Y equals clear, 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 negative sine x graph. Now, um, this one is a weird one. All right, so here's, here's how I interpret two cycles. One cycle is here. Now, this is a negative cycle. 95% of the time, if they're asking you to graph cycles, you're, you're starting from zero moving this way, okay? So if one cycle goes from zero to two pi, 
two cycles would go from 0 to 4 pi. Okay, so it's like going around the circle twice, right? So I'm not going to skip here. So your pi over 2, your pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi. And then, the whole, and then you just keep going, right? But basically watch what's going to happen. So at 0, you were 0. Then at pi over 2, you're negative 1. At pi, you're at 0. At 3 pi over 2, you're here. At 2 pi, you're there. Now you just kind of go, so you went down, up, down. You're just going to repeat that now. Down, up, down, and you ended right here at 4 pi. So now this is one cycle there. And then that's two cycles there. Okay, so there's graphing two cycles. Okay. Okay, that went right through. Oh, and now it made it look ugly. That went right through there at two. So there's okay, down, up, down, down, up, down. All right, last one. And so now this one is telling me to go from negative two pi to positive two pi at five cosine x. Okay. Uh, y equals clear. Clear, clear, 5, cos x. Hit graph, and that's what your answer is going to look like. See the amplitude is up there at 5. Okay, nice big curves there. All right, so let's finish out strong here. Uh, 0, pi over 2, pi. Uh, what am I? Skip 1, skip 1, skip 1. 3 pi over 2. 2 pi. So at 0, you're starting up at 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, that's 5 there. So here we go. I go, oh, I should count it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Finish strong. Negative 5. So right there, it hits at 0. At pi, you're back down here. At 3 pi over 2. And then at 2 pi, yeah, I'm right about there. So that was going from 0 to 2 pi. Now we got to go the other way. Uh, that's that. Skip one there. Skip one there. Skip one there's your negative 2 pi. Down. Turn around. Back up. Ugh. Didn't finish as strong as I liked, but I finished. So there you go. There's your basics for graphing your sine and your cosine with an amplitude. We're going to start going over some shifts, some periods, some frequencies uh, in the next lesson. So hopefully this all went well for you, helped you. Link, subscribe, comment, post notifications, do all that cool stuff.